Hello and welcome to our second November adult story time, story time for adults. This month we are celebrating and honoring National Native American Heritage Month. Be sure to watch the first video in this November story time series to catch up on land acknowledgement and a little bit more about Native American Heritage Month and why we celebrate and honor it. Um, Again, this month is a time to celebrate rich and diverse cultures, traditions, and histories, and to acknowledge the important contributions of Native people. Also, Heritage Month is also an opportune time to educate the general public about tribes, to raise a general awareness about the unique challenges Native people have faced both historically and in the present, and the ways in which tribal citizens have worked to come with us. Um, just a reminder, last time we looked at this native land map, um, this is an extreme zoomed in version. If you go to native-land.ca, you can see the entire world and the native lands um, within. And um, what I did was zoomed way in on the map. So here is Crystal Lake Public Library in the town of Crystal Lake. And um, what I learned was that we um, are on the lands of the Kikapoi or Kickapoo. Probably you've heard the term Kickapoo, but um, Kikapoi is the other pronunciation. So I wanted to share that with you again in case you missed our first video. And without further ado, let's get to our story. So tonight's reading is from a wonderful book of short stories called Living on the Borderlines by Melissa Michael. Melissa is of Seneca descent and today's story is called Calling the Ancestors. Calling the Ancestors by Melissa Michael. He stands along the edge, the outside of the crowd, praying. He bows his head, eyes closed. Beneath his eyelids, a maroon shade appears. Flashes, images, pass each other, his mind creating them from his past, sometimes perhaps his future. Now and again, his mouth moves, forming words he knows and some he doesn't know. The wind blows his hair behind him, cooling his neck and back. The sun is setting, but still July warm. In Victor, New York, 80 degrees easily feels like in Arizona 90, even though they stand stretched far from Rochester City buildings. Decades have passed his time away from home. He searches his mind, hunts and waits for more wood to come. He knows the songs, all of them. They beat through his blood, even if he hasn't learned them from his grandfather or sung them with others. He can call them forward. A young woman explains this to the children as they wait, ready to learn. Her soft voice carries. We need to wait for him to find the songs for today, she says. Songs he had sung appear in his consciousness, another man singing them. He hears but doesn't see the words. The language he learns as he sings and as they sing to him when he closes his eyes. You cannot learn without them, his grandfather had told him. They hold our traditions just there. He holds his hand above his head, then touches his heart. It will connect here if we listen. So he listens. Certain images, he wonders if they were from the past, not his past, his family's past. They are not his future, that he can tell. Strange clothes and familiar strangers. He shakes his head, keeping his eyes closed. He clears his mind, stops the voices, and blocks out the people around him. A breeze blows again that his skin cannot ignore. He allows the leaves rustling, the grass touching his sandaled feet, the fresh blooms, all to come to him. New words fall forward, enter his brain, 
and translates where he understands the meaning. We cannot make English words from them. He sways with the music, bobs his head, taps his leg. Then another. Old songs. From so long ago, he can't place them. Friendship, brotherhood, a general sweep of deeper intentions and connections. Words spill forth in his eyes, and with eyes still closed, he sings quietly. This is enough to gauge tone, speed, and notes. After twice through each one, he opens his eyes. Light makes him blink a few times. His visions lessen, although he still senses the earth below him, holding him up. He hands a few boys their own small drums or rattles. He begins to sing, his voice soft, then increasing in volume and intensity. The boys dance behind the men, their shuffles smaller, him stretching his stride, his voice gaining strength. He first sings the songs he knows, ones only for the men who circle with him. Waving her hand, the young woman encourages the children and even some new adults to join. The men dance first during the men's song, and then there is a song for all, she, de she describes. A small boy, maybe three, tries the steps, his feet not quite big enough and his body not quite tall enough to carry a beat. But he tries and almost copies his uncle in front of him. The boy does not take his eyes off his uncle's feet. Even singing and pulling songs, he notices these things. How each dancer moves, their steps communal, but their own. No two alike. Some more confident and hard-stepping. Some softer, careful, cautious. New at this. He joins the dances for this. The lessons. What his grandfather had given him, he gives to them. He steps and sings and drums. The tone vibrates through him and around the group, forming a small circle. They all vibrate. He sees the movements through them, repeating the beat of their blood. All blood. Repeating the steps of hundreds of years. Today. Different. Always different. Yet always calling the ancestors right there. With them. Stomping together. Patting down the grass. Patting down the grass. That's just one of many beautiful stories that Melissa features in this book of short stories. A particular favorite, but is much longer. <laughs> I, I did want to read this one. Um, is called Crowding the Dark Spaces. Um, and maybe an excerpt at some point I will bring to the group. Um, but I highly recommend this book, Living on the Borderlines, Stories by Melissa Michael. And what's great is it is available right now on Hoopla. And with Hoopla, with your Hoopla account, um, which is a digital, it's ebooks and um, e audiobooks, you can. Um, uh, check it out immediately. You don't have to wait for any holds or anything like that. So if you want to know more about Hoopla, you can download the Hoopla app from uh, whatever app store you use on your devices, or you can go to our website at clpl.org and look up um, downloads under um, uh, books and library. So um, definitely check that out if you enjoyed that reading at all. I would love to read more of her work. Thank you so much for joining me for that uh, beautiful story by Melissa, and I hope you have a wonderful night. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, please stay safe and stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Bye.